Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about human nervous system, its division and their role. So let's get started. First of all, we need to understand that central nervous system and peripheral nervous system are two main subdivisions of human nervous system. So let's talk about central nervous system. Central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord as you can see in the given diagram. So what they do is that they analyze the sensory information which is being provided to them and then generate the respective response according to that information provided to them. So their function is actually creating or generating a response according to the information. So now let's talk about peripheral nervous system. As you can see over here in the diagram, peripheral nervous system consists of peripheral nerves. And what is the function of these nerves? These nerves are actually responsible for receiving the sensory information from the peripheral regions of the body and then taking that sensory information to the central nervous system that is brain or spinal cord, which then uh, analyze that information and generate the response accordingly and then that response is again conveyed through these peripheral nerves to the effector organ. For example, if you touch a hot body, what happened that sensory information from your peripheral regions of the body take that information that you have touched a hot object, that information is taken from the peripheral nerve all the way to your spinal cord and then to your brain and this information is then analyzed and response is generated and then that response is again conveyed to the affected organ through those peripheral nerves. So the response that was generated in this example was that central nervous system provided the information to the peripheral nervous system for the effector organ to stay away or to pull back hand from that hot object so that it could not be burned. Although this all looked like a long process, but all of this happened in a fraction of millisecond. Now if we talk about peripheral nervous system specifically, peripheral nervous system is further consists of sensory or afferent division and motor or efferent division. So what is the difference between these two divisions? As their name indicate, sensory information is being received through the sensory division or efferent division, whereas motor or efferent division is responsible for conveying response to the affected organ, which is being received through the central nervous system. Sensory or efferent division is responsible for input of the information whereas motor or efferent division is responsible for output of the information. So in other words, we can say that sensory or efferent division is responsible for taking information to the central nervous system, whereas motor or efferent division or peripheral nervous system is responsible for taking the information from the central nervous system to the effector organ. So now if you talk about the further subdivision of peripheral nervous system that is motor or efferent division, it includes somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. As we know now that motor or efferent division is only responsible for taking the information or taking the response from the central nervous system to the factor organ. It is only responsible for that it has no role in collecting sensory information. So we can say that somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous systems are two different type of responses which are being generated from the sensory information which is being provided to the central nervous system. So somatic nervous system is actually responsible for voluntary motions. So voluntary motions are those kind of motions which are in our control like moving, walking or talking 
all of these are voluntary motions whereas autonomic nervous system is involved in involuntary motions these are those kind of motions which are not in our control like digesting our food similarly heartbeat is not in our control it is also one of those involuntary motions so now we can say that skeleton muscles are part of somatic nervous system whereas smooth muscles or cardiac muscles are involved in autonomic nervous system because of their involuntary action whereas skeleton muscles are actually voluntary in nature so there are some primary differences between somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system so let's talk about them in somatic nervous system there is only one single neuron whereas in autonomic nervous system there are two neuron which uh, take the response from the uh, spinal cord to the factor organ so in somatic nervous system there is only one single neuron that is taking the response from the spinal cord to the factor organ whereas in autonomic nervous system there are two neurons one is called as preganglionic neuron and the other is called as postganglionic neuron and between them there is a ganglionic cell so in somatic nervous system the neuron is myelinated whereas in autonomic nervous system it is non myelinated or sometimes slightly myelinated so the neurotransmitter which is involved in somatic nervous system is acetylcholine whereas in autonomic nervous system it can be acetylcholine or it can be norepinephrine so in other words we can say that in somatic nervous system acetylcholine is responsible for signal transduction that is the transference of signal or responses from neuron end to effector organ whereas in autonomic nervous system the response is being carried from the neuron to neuron or neuron to effector organ through neurotransmitters that are acetylcholine or norepinephrine as you can see right over here that somatic motor neuron is directly conveying the signal or response to the skeleton muscle or somatic effector whereas in autonomic motor neuron there are two neurons one is preganglionic neuron and other is postganglionic neuron and between them there is a ganglionic cell so over here there are two kind of uh, connections one is between neuron and neuron whereas the second one is between effector organ and between the neuron whereas in somatic motor neuron you can see that there is only presence of one connection that is between neuron and skeleton muscle and signal transduction between these connection occur because of neurotransmission which is carried out by neurotransmitters in case of somatic motor neuron neurotransmitter which is involved is acetylcholine whereas in autonomic motor neuron the neurotransmitters which are involved are acetylcholine or norepinephrine so now let's get into autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system is then further subdivided into sympathetic division and parasympathetic division sympathetic uh, division is related to fight and flight like more of those responses which are related to fear or emergency conditions whereas parasympathetic division is related to rest relax and digest and more of a calm situation like when you are having vacation you do not have anything to do and you're just watching tv and eating good food all of these things are because of the domination of parasympathetic division but what happened when sympathetic division is being dominated in that condition we need to understand a situation like you are alone in a forest and a lion is coming towards you and you are frightened and you are running away from him and all of this situation 
you are having fear and your blood pressure is raising and your heartbeat is getting faster all of these things are because of uh, your sympathetic division being dominated over parasympathetic division so now let's discuss both of these nervous systems in detail in parasympathetic division what actually happen when you are not having any kind of stress you are just relaxing watching tv eating food what actually happen your people constrict it also stimulates your saliva or tear production there is constriction of bronchi and your heart slows down and your stomach pancreas and intestine stimulates there's the reason why you feel more hungry when you are doing nothing similarly there is stimulation of urination and it also promotes erection of genitals so these all conditions happens when you are just relaxing you are not having any kind of emergency situations and this is all whereas in sympathetic innervation what actually happen when sympathetic nervous system is being dominated over parasympathetic nervous system what actually happen that there is dilation of people and then there is inhibition of saliva production because you do not want anything to digest at that time you want to focus on the problem or the situation you are in so similarly your bronchi dilates because you want more oxygen to get into your lungs and you want more focus on the situation so your heart accelerate like if you are uh, running in the forest and a uh, lion is coming behind you you are running very fast your heart rate will automatically increase and your bronchioles will dilate because they want more oxygen to get in similarly it stimulate epinephrine or nor epinephrine release which further enhance the situation and then it stimulate glucose release because you want more energy being provided to your muscles or to brain to solve the situation to get away from that situation and then your stomach pancreas and intestines will also be inhibited because you again do not want to digest anything you want to be focused on that situation because you would not be eating anything at that time when line will be running behind you okay so it will also inhibit your urination and it will promote ejaculation or vagina contractions so all of these things come under sympathetic division being activated or being dominated over parasympathetic division so again over here we have another diagram which is presenting differences between parasympathetic and sympathetic division so you can see again in parasympathetic division there is constriction of people there is slowing down of heartbeat there is constriction of bronchioles there is stimulation of bile release constriction of blood vessels stimulation activity of digestive system relaxation of uterus and increase in the urinary production neurons which are responsible for parasympathetic divisions originates from cranial and sacral region of spinal cord whereas neuron responsible for sympathetic division originates from cervical thoracic and lumbar region of spinal cord and all of these neurons are responsible for pupil dilation increase in heart rate dilation of bronchial tubules sweat gland uh, stimulation increase in the rate of glycogen to glucose decrease in activity of digestive system and stimulation of production of adrenaline and vaginal contraction and relaxes bladder all of these things are happening in sympathetic division so now there are some differences between these neurons present in parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system 
In parasympathetic nervous system, preganglionic neurons are longer. As you can see right over here, in blue color, these are preganglionic neurons, but, but postganglionic uh, neurons are not being obvious over here because they are very close to effector organs and they are not being shown over here. But you need to understand that they are very close to effector organ, whereas in sympathetic, there is shorter preganglionic neuron whereas which are shown in green color whereas uh, postganglionic neurons are in red color which are pretty long so in between them there is a sympathetic ganglion which is very close to spinal cord and this ganglion is present away from spinal cord and closer to the effector organ in parasympathetic nervous system so as I have used the word dominance previously for any one division, that was because one of the division take dominance over the other at a specific time or in a specific situation. It does not mean that one system or one division is being activated and other is being deactivated. That is not true. Both of these divisions are actually activated at a time or at any time but one takes dominance over the other which is very much important to be known because both of these divisions are present and working but one division take dominance over the other causing its own effects that we have discussed previously related to one specific division so this is very important to know that both of these conditions, both of these systems are present at a time in a human being, but one takes dominance over the other in a specific situation. So we can say that when you are at rest, your parasympathetic nervous system is being dominant over sympathetic, whereas when you are having some kind of stress or you are having some kind of emergency condition, in that case, your sympathetic division is being dominated over the parasympathetic division. So that was all about human nervous system and its division and their role. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching my videos.